Well, the Cerro Banco adventure is over. I tried to make it once and uh, just got turned around. I was exhausted and dehydrated. So I went back a second time. I remember when I came back from Cerro Banco the first time uh, when I didn't make it. I remember thinking, I've got to go back there. I've got to eventually make it. I can't just let myself be defeated like that. And so when I was getting ready to go the second time, make the second attempt, I told my wife, hey, I'm going to go to Cerro Banco today. Uh, I'll see you, you know, when you get home from work. And she said, and we had plans the next day. We were going away for the weekend. And she said, don't go. <laughs> don't go. You're going to get hurt. Something bad's going to happen. And when your wife says something like that, it's your job as a man to go anyways, because women love being able to say, I told you so. So if you're a good husband, you will give your wife as many opportunities to say, I told you so as possible. And that's a half throttle <laughs> marriage pro tip. Don't forget that. Motorcycle adventurer and marriage counselor, all in one. After that loader got me across the river, um, I crashed. I crashed and hurt my leg almost immediately after that. I mean, just a few hundred meters up the road from where that river was, that's where I crashed. So as soon as my day started, that's when I crashed. And you know, had, had I fallen somewhere where the bike could have laid flat, could have put my shoulder in the ground a little bit and then maybe lift, took some pressure off my leg and then pulled my leg out like that. But because it fell where it did, um, I, it had me pinned, like I needed my right leg to push off of the ground and get the bike back up, but I couldn't do that. So pretty much what I had to do was just kind of take the bike and bounce it sort of off of my leg to get enough weight off of it to pull my leg out. So my, my leg was trapped under this, this box and my ankle was kind of like at a right angle, you know, my calf was here, foot was here, <clears throat> and then it was jammed up against dirt here. So it was a really painful situation. Later that day I had a big lump. Um, it's still a little bit swollen, it still hurts a little bit, but I can get around okay. It turned out it, was, uh, it wasn't like exactly my ankle, it was a little bit up higher, but it certainly felt like uh, a sprained ankle or maybe a small fracture when it happened. Thankfully, it wasn't. After everything that I'd been through, the hiking, the pushing the bike, the getting back down to the river through the mud, I got to that river and uh, it was moving fast and it was, it was big. And I sat there, a couple people, once in a while a person would come along and be like, oh, just go for it. Some, the first person told me, don't do it, it's too big. The other people were telling me, oh, you've got a big motorcycle, it's no problem. And I would, I would ask them, how many times have you ridden a motorcycle? Uh, none. Yeah, exactly. So I think that I, I know that if I feel like I can't do it, I'm not going to do it. So I sat there for at least two hours. I just sat there and the rain just kept coming down. I was, the rain stopped for a little bit and I was watching this one little spot in the, in the river to kind of measure where, where the level was. And I noticed it started to go down and then the rain turned back on and it just was pouring for hours. And uh, I was yelling at the clouds and telling them to go away and, and it just wasn't happening. So I walked into town, I got those guys and, uh, and they got me out of there. Rode home through some gnarly rain and, uh, and uh, lightning. When the lightning flashed, that was the only time I could see anything. It was so dark, my helmet was so foggy. So the lightning was actually kind of a good thing. At the end of the last video, I said I was never going outside again. Well, obviously I'm going to go outside again and go on more adventures with the KLR. But that isn't gonna stop me from complaining when I'm out there and things are going wrong and proclaiming that I'm never gonna do it again. So get used to it. Thanks for all your comments um, on these videos about the Cerro Banco and sort of even though I was already home and editing, obviously you were still uh, cheering me on and hoping that I made it. 
and I have fun reading them and responding and joking around and um, answering questions. One thing I get, one thing is getting on my nerves though uh, about knobby, the comments about knobby tires. I know I should have knobby tires. When I was in Panama City with my flat tire, I was in the biggest city in the country at the biggest shopping center, probably in Central America. This huge mall that they had there. And the only tire that, would, that they had that would fit the, K, the KLR 650 was this one, a Pirelli MT60. So I know I should have knobby tires, but I can't get them. Some, some people say, well, just order them. Well, there's no mail system here. I have to get a courier to bring it down. When I, when I ordered a new rear shock, when I bought the bike, the shock was spent. So I ordered a new rear shock and paid, I don't know, $450 for the, for the new shock. To ship it down here cost me $200. So if I buy a knobby tire for whatever they cost and then sh ship it down here, it's gonna cost me $50 to $100. And then the chances of it being stolen are pretty high. So that's my situation. I can't just get stuff in Panama. I can't just jump on eBay, find some tires and have them shipped down. I don't, I don't have that option. So life is different here. So if you, if you see me not having something, there's probably a good reason that I don't have it. That's just because I can't get it. All the motorcycles in Panama, or most of them, they're much smaller than this. People ride 125 cc's, um, little, little dirt bikes around, they don't have tires this big. I just, so why would a store have them if there's not many bikes around like this? I tell people that this is a 650 cc bike and it like blows their mind. 650? Like they're trying to do the math in their head. What? Thanks for cheering me on. Thanks for watching. There's gonna be plenty more to come. I try to put out something new every day. I don't always make it, but check back often because there's always gonna be something new here.